All right. Our prelude this morning is uh, by Angie Pryor, PNS, Joy to the World. Thank you, Angie. Tom, will you please lead us in our call to worship this morning? The call to worship. Light the candles. The hope, hope of, of our, our hearts, hearts has been born. born. Sing the carols. The star to guide our spirits has risen. Embrace your neighbor. The cradle of compassion receives us all. Believe in the mystery. The love we long for is here. God of stables and stars, you are the hope that leads us forward. You are the love that cradles our hearts, and you are the peace that quiets our fears. You are the joy that sounds through our voices. You are the face that shines through the Bethlehem baby. Amen. Let us sing together, Angels from the Realms of Glory. Our prayer of confession. Gracious God, you revealed yourself in an ordinary circumstance, a birth. If we had been there, would we have recognized you, or would we have been put off by the parents' shabby clothing, the crude surroundings, the smell of the animals, and the crying of the baby? 
We acknowledge our attraction to all that seems spectacular or sensational. We confess our inability to see you in places or people that may seem unlikely or unlikable. God came upon us in a babe in Bethlehem to awaken hope in us and assure us of a love that is everlasting. Let us receive the good news of this grace. Amen. Amen. Let us read from Psalm 148 and let's, let's rejoice the Lord together. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth. Ye sea monsters in all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. Amen to that. Our, our gospel scripture this morning is um, from the, the second chapter of Luke. Uh, we read through the Christmas story earlier and some other parts and pieces of Luke about the life of Jesus. And um, today we're in that phase of um, what's next? What's next? And how do you raise, how do you raise the son of God? Kind of an awesome challenge for, for Joseph and Mary. This incident that, uh, that I'm going to read about this morning comes after um, several, quite a few years, actually, Jesus is now 12 years old. And um, this is the story of Jesus in the temple. This is Luke 2, verses 41 to 52. Now, every year, his parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey, and then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. All who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to, the, to him, child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. And he said to them, why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <sighs> I love, I love the human angle to stories in scripture. Can you imagine, can you put yourself 
in Joseph and Mary's shoes. Uh, we've lost the son of God. How could it get much worse than that? And they, they, they were a day's journey out before they realized it. So that means they had a, a day's journey walk and then another day's journey walk back. And then it said there were, it took them three days to find him in Jerusalem. Can you imagine how frantic, how frantic Mary must have been? There's something about um, this time of the year where we're, where we're getting into the, the what next kind of a phase. Everything builds up and builds up and builds up and, and it's what, what's, what's next. And um, I see parenthood like that. I see the, there's the buildup, you know, when, when um, someone is pregnant and we're looking forward to the birth of this child, just like we've been doing with, with Christmas and, and reading about Mary who is pregnant and anticipating the birth of her first, her first child. And I thought, how many times have, I, I, many of you have already gone through this. You've, you've birthed your first child, you know, the, 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 I don't know, trials, tribulations, the joys and the excitements and all those kinds of things. But um, I remember the, the birth of my first of the great, of the great nieces and nephews. And they're so cute and they're so small and you just want to hold them and hug them and count their fingers and count their toes and, and everything, everybody's happy. That's my nephew happy this and this was uh his baby was they were just born and uh everyone's happy and smiling and and um even their uncles are get to hold the baby and we're so excited to and and i'll tell you what babies scare me but they fascinate me too uh i just stare at them a lot and uh sometimes they get me to hold on to him but you know proud uncles proud family members Everybody's happy and excited at the birth of a new child. We all get to, and they're so cute, aren't they? These are two of my nieces. That's back several years ago. And they're so much fun to hold. But then the reality sinks in. You have to start dealing with the spit ups and the dirty diapers. And then when they get older and they start to, exploring things you know we, we start crawling and you have to chase them down they start touching things exploring things finding out what's hot what's good to touch what's not to touch my um, couple of my nieces and are, are are just fearless and they which is which is really frightening for a parent to have to to work with a kid that that knows no fear you got to watch them a lot but all of these things the reality of childhood the the now what comes forward and you find yourself raising a, a human being that's fully dependent on you. Imagine the, I can't, well, I can't imagine some of the pressures, but, but again, the joys that come with having a child. I'll get this off your screen now because I'm sure you're probably tired of seeing a baby spit up, but pretty soon before you know it, you're a grandparent. This is one of my favorite pictures of my grandma and grandpa back when we were, we were kids. And if you're wondering, I'm the one in the very front with his fingers in his mouth. Uh, yeah, that was me. And uh, wearing the matching shirt with my brother too, by the way. But uh, I love this picture because I, I love the expressions on grandma and grandpa's face because they have just endured a full day of, of nine grandchildren running around the house, one of whom is a crying infant. Uh, I love the look on grandpa's face. He looks like he's just about to fall over from exhaustion. And grandma has been wrestling with us kids all day. She looks like she's ready to take the head off the next person that uh, says Merry Christmas to her. So, um, so that is, that's kind of the life that we have as, as parents, family members, and all that. When I think about um, Joseph and Mary and, and these stories about Joseph and Mary, um, I try to remember that, you know, they're not fairy tale characters, they're real characters. And here they are 
with this uh, firstborn child born in these horrific conditions, you know, uh, an, a, an animal as a, where you keep animals and, and the crib is, is a manger, a thing that animals eat off of, you know, it, it's got to be quite the, uh, quite the start, you know, and, and maybe when Joseph and Mary were contemplating the fact that this was, this was a very special child, this was the son of God that Mary was bearing, um, I think they probably wished that they they wanted a room in the inn where where maybe this this very very special baby could be born in in at least a sanitary place. So I wonder if they're thinking, gosh, we've already failed God. We didn't do what we were supposed to. Do. We're we're having God's this baby in in a in a manger. But the amazing things that come after that, the shepherds. And then the story takes us in Luke, the story takes us to Mary and Joseph doing what parents do. They took Jesus in on the eighth day to be circumcised. You know, they followed the law that, and, and they, they went into the temple, they had Jesus presented. And there, there was Simeon was there. Um, and, and Simeon pronounced this prophecy over this child that was like, this child is going to do amazing things. You know, I've been waiting for this Messiah to come, and here he is. Can you imagine Joseph and Mary standing there with their, their newborn and having this, this man come to them and, and, and prophesy over him and tell him, tell them these amazing things that this baby is going to do. But then Simeon tells Mary something that would have given anyone pause. He says, after he's saying all these great things about Jesus and all the things that Jesus is going to accomplish, he says to Mary, um, he warns her, he says, Mary, uh, a sword will pierce your own soul too. And Mary stores all this in her heart, a warning, something, something's coming in, in her son's life. You know that song, Mary, Did You Know? Everybody loves that song. It's very popular right now. And every time I hear that question, I want to say, I, I, I kind of talk to the radio and say, yes, yes, she did. She did know. The angel told her. She's birthing the Messiah, something special. But I don't think she knew from day to day, you know, how that was going to play out. Because she also had a baby that, that she was to care for and raise a baby that spit up, a baby that had poopy diapers, a baby that learned to crawl, a baby that grew into a, to a, a, a nine-year-old, a 10-year-old, and then God forbid, a teenager or almost a teenager. And that's where our story picks up here with Jesus, 12 years old. Again, that his parents are raising him the way that they know best, which is to following the the laws and, and the, the, the rules of, of Judaism. And they're taking Jesus to, the, to Jerusalem for, to celebrate Passover. And at 12, that's when you're, you become a man in that time. That's when you're, you have your bar mitzvah or your bat mitzvah and, and, and you're, you're, you start to be treated as a man. It's that transition point. And then Jesus hangs out at the temple everybody's leaving and Jesus stays at the temple. Can you imagine? Can you even begin to imagine the panic if you couldn't find one of your kids? Can you imagine the, uh, you know, being responsible for, for a child and then that child is not there? And here they went days looking for Jesus. Um, I think it's funny, well, funny for me as a single person observer, but um, when Jesus, uh, you know, their, their first comment is, why did you do this to us? You, you made us crazy. Why are you here for pity's sake? And, um, and Jesus is like, well, uh, you know, people often wonder, how much did Jesus know as he was growing up? How much did he know about uh, what was coming and, and things? And, and somebody said, wrote that, you know, Jesus had the, the, the understanding of a 12-year-old 
but still that understanding of that he was special, that understanding that God was a was a big part of his life because he's like, well, of course I would be here. Where else would I be? But as a 12-year-old, you know, they don't always think about their parents, their moms, their dads. It's like, I'm here, I'm focused, I'm doing this, you know, and Mary had to prop, I, I think Luke cleaned this story up just a little bit. I think uh, Joseph and Mary were absolutely furious and, um, uh, and, and who wouldn't be, you know, they loved their child and they disappeared. Why have you treated like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. And Jesus didn't understand. But then, and he said, well, didn't you know I've, I've got to be in my father's house? So he understood that, that he, was, he was born special, born of God. But he had that 12-year-old understanding. And so there he was. And then it says that uh, Mary and Joseph didn't understand what Jesus was saying to them. And then there's this thing that he says, then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. He's, you know, he didn't, um, Jesus was humble. He didn't lord that over them. He stood with them and he allowed Mary and Joseph to raise him. And he was, and it says he increased in wisdom and years and in divine and human favor. So many things that we encounter, so many things that life brings our way, the, the what next, we just don't see. We often don't see those things coming. And Jesus grew for, for 30 years, and he increased in, in wisdom. And Mary was his mom. Joseph was his stepdad. He probably learned carpentry and all those things. We don't know, though, about that period in his life because the, the gospel writers didn't think that it was really important. So, so they didn't share that. So it was probably nothing, nothing major, nothing special. He just grew and developed and learned to understand what it's felt like to be a human. Experienced life just the way we did. And he experienced God's presence just the way we do. And as things happen in his life, and as Mary watched all these things happen to her son when he began his ministry, when he's preaching and, and people are saying bad things about him, you know, that goes to a mother's heart like a sword. But she trusted God, and she knew that God was with Jesus, and that together they were accomplishing this mission, and she got to participate in it. And to the very end. And God was with her. You know, as we look forward to just our lives, just the day-to-day -day lives, we don't often we don't know what's coming either. You know, we don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know what next week holds, next year. You know, this the situation we're living in right now is a season. It's not going to continue. That another season's going to come. And the one thing that's consistent, the thing that was consistent for Mary, for Joseph, the thing that's consistent for us is that God is present. God is present in our lives. And we can trust the Lord that whatever, whatever's around the corner, whatever comes up, that God will stand with us and give us the knowledge that we need, the wisdom that we need, the strength that we need to work our way through whatever season lies ahead. And for that, we're grateful. And that is the greatest gift that, that God can give us during this Christmas season. So we walk with the Lord and we trust in God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. And invite you to join us as we sing. Oh, come all you faithful. Have this opportunity to just tell God how, how much we love him too.
for God so loved the world that God gave his one and only begotten son, Jesus, the greatest gift that we could receive. That Jesus lived among us, died for us, was resurrected from the dead, and now lives with us each and every day. And I invite you to share from a grateful heart our joys, our gifts, as we live in faith. These are ways that you can, can give in a, in a material kind of a way. We've, uh, we usually don't do uh, an offertory for the Zoom service, but uh, Christmas Eve, uh, Susan shared a, a video of Angie's playing of Silent Night and some of Chris Young's pictures of the church at Christmas time. And uh, I just thought it was really nice. So I thought it's worth seeing again if you were with us on Christmas Eve. And if you weren't with us on Christmas Eve, enjoy. And now our doxology. invite you to join me in the prayer of thanksgiving. Generous God, in this time of tinsel and trimmings, we pause and remember that yours was the first Christmas gift of all. With grateful hearts, we offer these gifts to you. Wrap them in the radiance of your grace, that they might spread love and healing in our world. Angie and, and Becky have this beautiful recording. What child is this?
parenthood is can be scary, frightening, joyful, and wonderful. Requires a strength and wisdom. Life is the same way. But with God with us, always and forever, we can handle both. We can handle it all. Watch for God's hand in your day to days. And as we go forth, may we, we like the heavens, heavens praise God, God in the heights. heights. May we, we like, like the shepherds, shepherds journey in the, in the name of love. May, may we like, like the innkeepers, make room for hope. May, may we like the angels, sing out our joy. May, may we like, like Mary, cradle peace in our hearts. Amen. Amen.